Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Tomcat session for ApacheCon 2021 at home. Amit Pandey is going to be speaking to you today about enabling FIPS, which is the uh, Federal Information Processing Standard in Tomcat. Thank you very much for uh, for presenting today, Amit. Take it away. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, hello, good morning, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending attending this session. Uh, so my name is Amit. I work as a senior principal software engineer with Veritas Technologies. Uh, <clears throat> so here is going to be uh, the agenda roughly about what I'm going to cover in this session. So we'll have a just brief introduction about uh, like myself uh, and what I do professionally. Then we will uh, jump into the what and uh, whys of FIPS uh, and maybe uh, uh, followed by uh, a question to uh, all of us, like where we are in our FIPS journey. Uh, and after that, uh, we will uh, go through the uh, prerequisites that are required. Like I can uh, do some code walkthrough or some configuration file changes that are required to be done. And then we can jump on to the demo. Uh, finally, uh, uh, I will try to share what I have learned uh, over time. Uh, so. So just to briefly uh, introduce myself, uh, I have been working on uh, a data protection product called NetBackup, uh, which is a Veritas flagship product. So uh, NetBackup uh, actually uses Tomcat extensively uh, to host uh, like web UI of its own, uh, as well as uh, to host the RESTful endpoints. So we have been using uh, Tomcat for a long time, uh, I think, uh, Maybe it is uh, definitely, I think, more than 10 years back. But my prime, uh, or my trust, or I got involved significantly into uh, putting up the web services infrastructure and looking into Tomcat since Tomcat 7, I guess. Uh, so we have, like, over time, we have extended. Uh, a uh, lot of Tomcat functionality. We do have a lot of customization made for the Tomcat version that we use. Uh, and definitely, I mean, uh, needless to say, uh, we try to be uh, on latest as uh, much as we can. Uh, I, I, I got to know like last week we released 9053 and probably that's where we will move uh, in a week or so. Uh, and so this is uh, about net backup, but definitely uh, there are other Veritas products that also use uh, use Tomcat. So yeah, I mean, Tomcat is uh, pretty much used uh, very widely uh, in, in Veritas technologies where I work. Uh, so yeah, uh, so the, the topic for, just let me see if I can, okay. How do I stop this hall of mirrors? because I wanted to take a look at uh, Q&A as well. Okay. I can ask the questions if you'd like me to interrupt at any time. Uh, sure, you to, yeah. You don't necessarily have okay. to keep an eye on that. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, so, so let's just uh, uh, get started with the basics of uh, what is FIPS. Uh, so FIPS, uh, as as Chris uh, mentioned, it stands for like Federal Information Processing Standards, which are uh, developed uh, by the NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Uh, basically, it offers uh, a set of standards uh, in in a computer system that. Uh, are primarily used by uh, the U.S. federal uh, as agencies and government contractors. Uh, so these standards actually uh, were born uh, out of the FISMA Act of uh, 2002. <clears throat> and uh, and there are like a lot of uh, different set of FIP standards, as you can see on screen. And uh, definitely, we can read more about that on Wikipedia on uh, and on the NIST site. Uh, like there are standards for uh, linear FIP standards for uh, linear predictive coding. There are standards for 3D graphics, uh, standards for uh, 
personal identification verification standards for aes right <clears throat> so there are different uh, set of standards that are developed by uh, nist and they come into play in uh, very in different uh, software systems that we have uh, but the one that we are focusing here today uh, is the fips uh, 140 standard which is uh, security requirements for uh, cryptographic uh, modules uh, and uh, so do note that the standards also like keep ev evolving over time so uh, as of today uh, i think we can just certify for uh, one of uh, sorry 140-2 which is the current uh, certification uh, for fips compliance that is being offered and i think that stands uh, good until uh, 2026 Uh, even i think uh, fips 140 uh, dash 3 uh, the third version of this series is also uh, out there but as much as i recall there is no official uh, certification uh, that is happening yet for that so why uh, uh, why fips uh, basically yeah i just want to uh, explain uh, these three points by uh, by focusing on this uh, icon that all of us are familiar right so when we uh, just go to any uh, grocery store and uh, try to buy food items and see this we get a very different perception maybe the perception that we get is yes obviously it is of uh, better quality than its uh, non -orga organic uh, counterpart uh, so similarly uh, why fips uh, of course uh, the us government and uh, federal is agencies they mandate uh, fips compliance product uh, so there is like no choice uh, and being fips compliant actually uh, uh, inherently enforces some kind of uh, security in the product like to give you a few examples uh, if you claim to be uh, fips compliant you cannot use uh, uh, the pki uh, infrastructure with key size uh, less than 2k so you cannot use uh, 1024 bit keys uh, just just uh, as a one example then you cannot uh, use for example uh, the older versions of uh, tls protocols like the ssl uh, ones are not supported uh, if you want to be uh, fips compliant and uh, same goes uh, with uh, some cipher uh, suite right the algorithms used in those cipher so Uh, some of those are uh, definitely like uh, not uh, going to work when we want to claim uh, the fips compliance so this is uh, definitely what inherently fips offers but uh, for a layman like uh, not all web application developers or not all uh, tomcat users are uh, security experts right so from so from their perspective uh, uh, saying that you are fips compliant kind of gives them some confidence gives the user some confidence about the product uh, having some uh, good security uh, built in just like uh, uh, the feeling that we get when we uh, see uh, a, a food item which is marked as usda organic right <clears throat> customers definitely uh, can be more confident about using the product uh, though it is uh, not necessarily uh, uh, true uh, but certifying uh, uh, or saying that your product is fips compliance gives a impression a, uh, a good impression and uh, you can probably infer that uh, a product which is fips compliant obviously is uh, going to uh, pay attention to security in depth and not leaving uh, any other parts of the system less secure like uh, just to give an example uh, maybe uh, for a java world uh, using uh, string uh, data type for passwords right uh, or uh, or probably like logging uh, uh, passwords in log files so all such things like so uh, fips just is one facet of the overall uh, product security but it gives uh, gives the impression of a uh, lot of focus being put on uh, security uh, and and uh, definitely like sometimes uh, the cost of uh, proving uh, that your product which is non compliant but uh, it is still secure enough that cost is uh, much more higher than uh, 
taking the stride and uh, claiming compliance so it is again going back to that uh, food item analogy i mean if i uh, go to a a, a local uh, uh, fresh uh, like produce uh, farmer he can he he needs to convince me really hard to say that his product is equally good uh, compared to the one that has this uh, usd organic sticker right so same uh, so yeah once we uh, be compliant and uh, try to uh, like silence uh, the security scanners or lot of customer uh, queries so uh, from all these uh, point points uh, definitely fips compliance is going to be important of course uh, number one is uh, the the point number one mentioned here is prime driver as of now but uh, as uh, as we are focusing more and uh, more on the security uh, aspect of uh, the software systems uh, more less or likely i mean the fips uh, adaptation will grow or it will become even more uh, mainstream uh so uh, moving on uh, where are we uh, in our fifth journey uh, so i'm just talking right now in the context of uh, java application so the fips enablement can happen uh, at individual uh, java application level so this is just a beginning uh, beginning of our journey towards uh, fips compliance uh, then uh, we can have uh, fips compliance at the tomcat jvm level so what this implies that uh, whatever applications we have deployed uh, in tomcat they like all of them uh, adhere to fips standards because the setting is enforced or the compliance is enforced at the tomcat uh, uh, jvm level and the third level uh, probably like much uh, mature level is uh, when we enforce uh, the fips compliance at a jre level so uh, what that implies is uh, like all the applications which are uh, sharing the same jre uh, they need to be fips compliant so this is typically uh, i mean i can say uh, uh, a mature level but it comes with its own set of challenges uh, uh, in in the sense that uh, how upgrades to jres uh, typically happen uh, like out of band uh, like auto updates let's say in that case uh, we there has to be some validation that confirms that yes even with the new jre versions uh, whatever applications that are using uh, uh, this jre they are not going to break uh, in in fips mode so that becomes little bit of a challenge here but uh, definitely like all of uh, these levels uh, we can uh, like we can have uh, uh, in, in in our fips uh, compliance journey so any uh, questions so far so far thank you uh, no questions sorry nothing so far that i see okay okay sure uh so <clears throat> so here is uh, like here are some prerequisites that we need uh, to make uh, tomcat fips compliant so do uh, uh, watch out for uh, the variables uh, that that come into play uh, so whatever i am going to demo here uh, may not work as is and there might be some uh, tweaks that we uh, may have to have depending on these variables so Uh, for example uh, jre version uh, jre vendor so this is one uh, fact one thing that we need to factor in uh, tomcat versions uh, of course are uh, another thing uh, that we need to uh, consider uh, third thing comes to uh, what fips compliant uh, provider uh, that we are using crypto provider uh, that we are using uh, same goes with the jsc uh, provider as well so this is uh, i can say like the core infrastructure uh, pieces like these three things uh, and 
like fourth one is uh, definitely uh, what your application does uh, like what sort of uh, third party libraries it uses like for example uh, if we are using spring security uh, or any such uh, uh, library for access control and inter which in turn uh, indirectly uses uh, some uh, crypto uh, graphy apis then we need to uh, be aware for that as well uh, fifth thing uh, i mentioned here is about the file formats uh, uh, that we use for the key store and trust store so uh, so when uh, i started looking into this for the uh, for the first time uh, obviously like jks is a uh, is a default uh, Uh, key store file format uh, which uh, obviously is not like uh, really recommended and we should be using uh, pkcs uh, 11 or 12 uh, but when it came uh, came to evaluating what what file format uh, for these key stores or trust stores work uh, the the best with the given uh, crypto provider like we found that uh, with the bouncy castle uh, uh, crypto provider the pkcs12 was not going to work in all of the uh, modes of operations that uh, the bouncy castle fips uh, library uh, provided so that's why we had to uh, kind of move away from using uh, something that is a industry wide standard like pkcs11 pkcs12 to uh, use a, a kind of custom you can say a bcfks format so these are all uh, the variables that we uh, really need to uh, uh, keep watching uh, and like these evolve right every uh, i mean you will get a new version of all of these uh, uh, like jre tomcat or the uh, crypto uh, provider uh, libraries so we need to watch out uh, for these new versions and ensure that uh, like whatever code we write it still uh, works or make like necessary changes in case uh, any of these causes any uh, breaking change uh, in our uh, fips compliant application so uh, so for the purpose of the uh, demo here uh, i have used uh, like java 8 uh, tomcat 9 so specifically like tomcat 9 o 52 uh, Uh, then a fips compliant crypto provider so we have used uh, a bouncy castle provider here for the demo uh, and as i mentioned like the bcfks formatted uh, key stores and trust stores so i have uh, a link here which uh, tells you what made us uh, uh, or what what was the reason uh, we need to use uh, uh, the bcfks format and not uh, uh, the pkcs uh, 12 and uh, and i have used a very simple uh, spring boot app for the demo uh, just wanted to show like how your application can uh, break when the tomcat is started with uh, fips mode enabled uh, so this is uh, just overview of uh, the changes that uh, uh, that we need to make like the first prerequisite was to uh, have uh the bcfks uh, formatted uh, uh key stores uh because the jks uh, because the jks uh, key store uh, which let's say stores the private key entries that is not going to work when we use uh, the bouncy castle fips library so apparently they do mention uh, uh, that uh the jks formatted trust stores like if uh, the store has only the uh trusted certificate entries then in that case we still can use uh, the jks format uh, so yeah so these are some variations uh, that we need to uh, uh, watch out for uh, read the documentation and uh, implement like what suits us the best <clears throat> uh, so second prerequisite is uh, resist using a tomcat lifecycle uh, listener to uh, register the fips compliant crypto provider of course there are uh, different ways uh, uh, to implement this uh, so we have uh, i've used the tomcat lifecycle uh, lifecycle listener here <clears throat> and then uh, corresponding configuration changes uh, in server xml so before uh, like going on for the demo uh, i can just briefly uh, show what changes uh, i had to do so uh, 
so here is the uh, the tomcat life cycle listener that i was uh, referring to <coughs> so it does some uh, uh, some property files check and uh, accordingly uh, configures uh, uh, accordingly registers the fips compliant uh, crypto provider uh, then uh, definitely i was uh, using sun uh, uh, jsc like we are uh, so I, i'm using sun uh, jre uh, which has like sun jsc as a default so we need to uh, ensure that we are configuring the sun uh, jsc with the appropriate crypto provider uh, with the fips compliant uh, crypto provider so so in in this uh, code like you can see that uh, the sun sun jre has been uh, reconfigured uh, with uh, the bouncy castle uh, uh, crypto provider which is a uh, which is a fips compliant uh, crypto provider so configuring uh, the jssc accord uh, appropriately and using the uh, fips compliant crypto provider is essential uh, especially if your application is going to make uh, some uh, let's say https calls to uh, any other subsystem so in that case uh, definitely we want to ensure that uh, that ssl communication uh, uses fips compliant infrastructure so that's why uh, hooking in uh, or configuring a fips compliant crypto provider is essential uh, when we use uh, when we configure the sun jssc uh, and then uh, uh, like as part of verification maybe this is for just the uh, end user uh, to ensure that they are indeed uh, running in uh, they want to ensure uh, that the tomcat instance is running in fips mo fips approved mode or not uh, just some uh, debug message that goes along so this is the listener code uh, that we uh, that we see here uh, and uh, so the so this listener is uh, registered in our server xml so when the tomcat starts uh, as part of the startup maybe i can probably uh, put this after the version uh, logger listener but still uh, so the first thing that happens is we just uh, register uh, the fips compliant crypto provider the bouncy castle fips library in this case and we reconfigure the jre as part of this listener and second portion uh, is uh, uh, about configuration of uh, the ssl host config uh, to use the fips compliant uh, key stores and trust stores uh, so if we just do not use uh, Uh, or if we just try uh, using any other uh, like for example jks uh, key store types during the tomcat startup itself uh, we will see errors that we are using something that is not uh, fips compliant so these are uh, this is one uh, important point that we need to keep in mind we need to uh, in this configuration we need to use uh, uh, everything that is fips uh, compliant and uh, of course we need to watch out uh, also here uh, for the cipher suites like uh, when i i just uh, downloaded the plain vanilla tomcat 9052 uh, that time uh, it started fine so i assume whatever default cipher suites uh, that we ship with tomcat today they are fips compliant but if at all uh, we are using some uh, custom uh, Uh, cipher suites in this uh, configuration we need to ensure that uh, they are uh, fips compliant <clears throat> so this is uh, so these two things are like main integration point uh, with respect to uh, making things uh, fix fips compliant or making the tomcat uh, startup fips compliant uh, are there any uh, questions seems like there are no questions okay we're good to go thank you yeah
so uh, so this was just a brief uh, overview of uh, what changes we uh, uh, need to make uh, to ensure that the tomcat startup the plain vanilla tomcat startup with no applications uh, uh, deployed uh, it starts uh, it works uh, with fips enabled so just to have the demo so uh, just to uh, start the demo uh, i have used this uh, java opt uh, property uh, that is uh, provided by uh, or th that is to be used uh, when we use the bouncy castle fips library uh, so what this property tells is that uh, anything that is not fips approved uh, will result in, in in failure so so we have uh, so i have here uh, exported this option and i'm now i'm going to start uh, the tomcat uh, sorry before that yeah uh, just a quick uh, point to note that uh, so the listener code that we saw earlier and which we hooked in uh, the tomcat uh, tomcat server xml so uh, so we need to uh, put a corresponding jar like which contains that class uh, in tomcat's lib as well as uh, we have the uh, fips compliant crypto provider jar available in tomcat's lib directory so with this property i'm going to start uh, the tomcat now and as you can see uh, because this property uh, that we saw uh, the use fips approved only uh, was set to true uh, you can see these log lines uh, which will help the user that uh, like what is happening uh, behind the scene to some extent and this one uh, log line tells that uh, now uh, indeed the tomcat instance is running uh, in fips approved mode so if at all during the storm tomcat startup workflow if at all uh, we happen to use anything that is not uh, fips compliant the, the st uh, startup wouldn't happen uh, so one uh, such instance uh, that i can recall is if we have uh, uh, the uh, the context uh, uh, managers configured the session managers configured for a given context then those context managers use uh, 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 like secure random uh, sec secure random number uh, generation algorithm so we need to ensure that they are also fips compliant i think by default tomcat uses uh, sha1 uh, pseudo ran random number generator but that's not uh, fips compliant so we just need to uh, update our server uh, server xml or uh, the context xml appropriately to ensure that uh, uh, the standard the uh, session manager is using uh, the fips compliant version of uh, secure random number generator so now you can see uh, our tomcat application uh, is up and running uh, so along with uh, a plain uh, plain vanilla tomcat <clears throat> i had also uh, uh, deployed a, a demo app which is just hosting a, a sample api uh, uh, to exercise like uh, to uh, do the key pair generation so now uh, if so now uh, let's say i i want to uh, try to see if i can use uh, if i can generate a key pair using key size of uh, 1024 then in fips mode uh, you are prohibited from uh, doing that so you so right now i have just uh, returned the exception uh, stack trace as part of this api call uh, but whereas uh, if i use uh, like a higher key size uh, 2k is uh, the minimum uh, size that we have to use so if we just use that uh, key size then the key pair generation uh, happens successfully uh, so <clears throat> so now i mean i will just uh, stop this and uh, let's say set this property to false and uh, try uh, running tomcat 
Okay, so now I'm not mandating uh, the Tomcat instance to be started with uh, the uh, FIPS approved only algorithms. Uh, and you can see a corresponding message here as well, which uh, tells that Tomcat is not running in FIPS appro approved mode. So now uh, uh, if I just refresh this, uh, two K sites should wor uh, works and even uh, the 1024 sites would also work fine because I'm using uh, the FIPS uh, compliant crypto provider in uh, non uh, approved mode. <clears throat> so, uh, so this is, uh, this is basically about uh, uh, the, the demo that I had. Uh, so the demo confirms uh, that the Tomcat startup in FIPS mode uh, was OK. And what uh, considerations that we need to uh, take into account when we want to make uh, make our application um, uh, FIPS compliant. Uh, so primarily, uh, I mean, if, if we are uh, using uh, in our code, if we are using uh, classes from uh, Java dot security or javax dot security uh, that means uh, we definitely know that we are explicitly dealing with security and we know uh, we know that these might be some areas which uh, might be uh, uh, directly impacted uh, when we choose a different crypto provider but otherwise uh, <clears throat> but but otherwise i mean we may not have like direct exposure uh, uh, to FIPS as such, direct or visible exposure, but there might be some indirect uh, way uh, where we are hooking in uh, uh, some or the other, uh, we are using the crypto APIs uh, behind the scenes. Like for example, one uh, example that I can uh, definitely give is if your web application is, let's say a microservice based uh, uh, architecture. And if we are making uh, HTTPS calls uh, from your web app to some uh, some other web app, then in that case, definitely uh, uh, the, the FIPS compliance uh, will come into uh, play. And that is, uh, uh, that is one way uh, where uh, you may need to like spend some time uh, to ensure that that workflow works uh, fine in FIPS mode. Another thing is like some uh, libraries, like access control uh, libraries that we use. So what kind of configuration we uh, do there, that also is important. Even if directly uh, we haven't written any security code uh, on our own as such. So this is uh, what I had for the uh, demo. Any uh, questions at all? I had one question. Um, Amit, did you try using the built-in FIP support using the APR connector and OpenSSL? And if so, why did you choose to use Bouncy Castle instead? Okay. Uh, no, we haven't. Uh, I haven't tried using the uh, APR. Uh, like our application uh, uses uh, NIO configuration extensively. So we just wanted to uh, enable our uh, FIP support on uh, top of uh, that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, no uh, experimentation with the APR. Although I, uh, I, I, I read that the APR configuration uh, has some FIP support, but it was uh, kind of not uh, uh, what we were already using. So, uh, so yeah, I, I haven't explored that. And uh, why Bouncy Castle? Uh, so, it is one of the uh, like more popular crypto libraries. Even otherwise, also uh, uh, like when we want to use uh, when we want to do any, any uh, crypto uh, uh, crypto operations uh, like using java code uh, then uh, bouncy castle library i think is uh, one of the most uh, popular libraries for example uh, built in there are no not so many uh, built in java apis itself to uh, manipulate uh, pem files or handle different forms of certificate and bouncy castle provides that and uh, so Bouncy Castle came with a FIPS uh, uh, version of it. Uh, 
so uh, so that's the reason i went with bouncy castle and uh, like in in our product uh, we use a commercial force of uh, bouncy castle uh, it is a, it's a commercial fork from a, a vendor that we work with so yeah i mean those are the reasons i used uh, bouncy castle for the demo but there are dif uh, definitely there are different providers i think nss is one what i am uh, aware of uh, but other than that i i don't know what other uh, fips compliant crypto providers we have does that uh, help answer the question Yep, thank you very much. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, so what 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 are the learnings here? Uh, like, uh, for first and uh, most important part uh, was uh, or, or something that is uh, really different uh, was uh, using appropriate file format for the uh, stores uh, and for the key stores so definitely we need to like whatever crypto provider that we choose we uh, we need to uh, ensure uh, we need to go through the documentation and see like what uh, they support and what they uh, do not it it would have been like really ideal if we can get uh, uh, let's say a pkcs12 format work uh, for these key stores and trust stores uh, regardless of uh, I mean, what mode of operation we use using any of the providers that would have uh, given uh, that should give us some interoperability. But uh, unfortunately, like based on uh, the analysis that I did or based on the documentation from the Bouncy Castle uh, FIPS library that we had, uh, PKCS 12 uh, didn't meet. Uh, didn't work in all of the modes of uh, operations so this is something definitely we need to watch out for uh, uh, we need to probably like correlate uh, what the fips st standard says versus what a, uh, a fips compliant vendor does as well uh, uh, because i mean there are revisions uh, in the libraries that are happening over time so we just need to watch out for that uh, like as i mentioned earlier uh, Bouncy Castle works with uh, uh, only with BCFKS format, uh, but it can work with JKS format if the trust store is going to be used uh, to just store uh, like trusted CAs and nothing else. So such variation is uh, what we need to uh, uh, watch out for. <clears throat> uh, Automation tests are even more critical. Uh, definitely, I mean, we, I don't have to focus much on the need for automation, but uh, like as I said, not every web application developer uh, is is a security expert, right? So, uh, how do you ensure, uh, or how do you, how do we ensure that your application is truly FIPS compliant? So, so if you have like enough automation which uh, with uh, a decent uh, code coverage or, or workflow coverage we can just turn that uh, fips flag on uh, for the tomcat or for any uh, java application for that matter and uh, see uh, how things fare so that is going to give us uh, like most confidence uh, but of course i mean uh, if if we are uh, very much uh, working on our own uh, instead of uh, in the sec area of security uh, then definitely we know what to test for or how to test but otherwise like for a normal uh, uh, web app developer who is not exposed to uh, security or the security is let's say abstracted uh, by use of various libraries on the development side or if the security testing is abstracted by the use of uh, scanners let's say or or some automation tools from uh, uh, different uh, security vendors uh, then yes i mean running those suites or having your own application automation is going to be far more uh, critical uh, so uh, uh, that the sun js js se reconfiguration issue was uh, one such thing uh, that i uh, discovered as part of uh, the automation test the test failed and then we uh, uh, like kind of did a little bit of uh, uh, reverse engineering you can say and that's where like okay we got to know yes this is one thing that we have to do uh, this is one more integration point where uh, 
the JSSC has to be configured with a FIPS compliant crypto provider. So automation testing is is definitely going to be uh, super critical if we do not have like if we are if we do not have enough uh, uh, security background uh, as such. Uh, so then, uh, yeah. Uh, so then there was this one uh, random number generation issue, and I thank Chris for his uh, input. So this discussion uh, is there in the Tomcat user DL about this. Uh, uh, so apparently, uh, on on Linux platforms, uh, the the FIPS compliant crypto uh, APIs uh, requires. Uh, uh, to have enough entropy to generate a secure random number and for that it uses like slash dave uh, slash random uh, random number device like which is a blocking call so uh, so so yeah uh, so we ran into an issue where the key tool command was stuck for like seven minutes or eight minutes and it was really hard to figure out uh, why uh, until uh, yeah, I mean, uh, some more debug logging for uh, uh, the security provider, uh, and then figuring out like where uh, we were stuck. So, I have uh, pasted a link here that you can uh, refer to. There is some good discussion, good insights from uh, Chris spe specifically around uh, this issue. So yes, uh, do watch out for that in your environment. Uh, uh, third thing is uh, certain JSSE behavior in in FIPS mode. Of course, I'm using uh, Java 8 uh, right now. Uh, so, so essentially, uh, you can again read the uh, details in the link, but I can just summarize uh, what the problem that uh, that one might run into. Uh, so, if your application uh, uses the Sun JSC and that is configured with a FIPS compliant crypto provider. Sun's default behavior does not allow you to use your own uh, key managers or your own trust managers. We have to use uh, the Sun's own uh, key manager and trust managers. So, which is which is fine in in most of the cases. But if your workflows are uh, like one workflow example uh, I can give is uh, if your application is making. Uh, uh, HTTPS call to some other entity to get the CA certificate. It is just like uh, the browser uh, gives you the opportunity or shows you the warning, right? Uh, uh, in case if it encounters a non-trusted uh, uh, certif server certificate or, uh, or for which it doesn't know the issuer. So then you look at the certificate details and you say whether you want to accept it or uh, just reject, right? And not connect to uh, the remote entity. So with Sun JSSC, there is no such option. So like you cannot get the certificate uh, of the remote end, uh, display the fingerprint and uh, allow user to take a call. Sun requires you to mandate, uh, uh, in, in FIPS mode, it mandates you to uh, authenticate the remote entity, like which is, which is definitely fine for uh, 90, 95, 99% of scenarios, but then there are some special scenarios, uh, scenarios which call for some additional uh, customization, and that is uh, that they uh, that it doesn't uh, allow. So just do uh, watch out for that and make like necessary uh, alternate arrangements to get past this problem. <clears throat> uh, so these, I mean, these are three issues where uh, we. Uh, Three, four things that I learned, and where I had to spend significant amount of time uh, to ensure, like, what to do. Uh, so, just I thought of uh, sharing them uh, so that you don't have uh, to go through the same pain. Uh, so whatever core snippets that I show, uh, I have shown here, uh, I can, I will just paste uh, all of those uh, on the GitHub page that I had created. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, here are some of the uh, references uh, that I found useful. Uh, hopefully, they will be uh, like useful for you all as well. Uh, yeah, uh, that's all I had. 
Are there any uh, questions, comments? Olaf Cook has a question about uh, whether there are worldwide equivalent regulations. Uh, FIPS is something that's defined by the United States federal government. Uh, are there similar regulations in other countries or is there anything that is, uh, that is truly worldwide? Uh, I am, uh, I, I don't think that, I mean, I, uh, that there is anything, uh, worldwide as such, uh, because like, I mean, uh, FIPS is right now, uh, limit, limited, uh, mandatorily to, I think the U S only. So I am, uh, like not aware if there is any, uh, worldwide equivalent, but, uh, who knows? I mean, uh, this uh, may be one good starting point and others can uh, build on that and uh, use uh, this as a baseline for worldwide standard. I have another question, which was your talk today was about running Tomcat as a server in FIPS compliant mode. If you would like to make outgoing HTTPS calls or use uh, cryptography in your own application, um, you need to take other steps as well. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes. All right. Does anyone else have any other questions for Amit? All right, Amit, thank you very much for your time today. Appreciate it. Um, there's a short break for, uh, well, since the conference is scheduled around uh, US East Coast time, it'll be lunch here. Uh, and so the sessions will resume at 10 minutes after 5 UTC, which is, uh, I think, just over or just under an hour from now. So we hope to see you back after the break. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you may want to terminate oh, your... Oh, sorry. Uh, your, uh, uh, yeah, I was just going through the chat, actually. Yeah, there seems a lot of chat, and I will lose it, right, if I leave, or I can still read it. Uh, it, it will remain in the session. I don't know how long okay. the session lasts, but uh, uh, if you'd sure. like to read it, take your time. Um, but you might want to turn off your video while you do yeah. it. You can, you can actually click the leave button in the upper right. You will just leave yeah. the audio in the video, but you'll stay in the session. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Thank Hopefully you it was okay. This was my first time. Uh, no, it was great. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot, Chris. Bye. All right. Great.